can everyone ping me in the chat windows yes have you guys tried on it anyone has any questions for the yesterday session for the static and non static variable and then how the memories are been allocated for it anyone has any questions okay uh, cool hello yeah hey, hello yes please me uh, hello murli i have a doubt yeah ishwita uh uh say suppose if we have a global variable with the name uh, static int a uh, okay a, okay next day program only i will tell you uh, okay. there is a global variable with the name static int k is equal to 40 right uh yes sir can you come again one second sorry okay suppose if we have the same variable variable name in the local you see as a global uh, as a global as well as local yes uh, that's what this program then what will be the output yeah so we will execute that program today okay that program we will try yesterday's thing you guys all have uh, clear about that yes okay good that's great so today we will just see one more program on the static and non static so that you all will have a clear understanding okay so today also i want you guys to help me on to execute this program uh, so i'll start on with uh, uh, shravan Hey, hi, Shravan. You there? Hello. Hi, Shravan. Uh, can you help me to so execute this program? So, yeah. what is the first memory location which will be created? Uh, so, uh, static pool. So, static pool is the first memory which will be created. Yes. Yeah. Then, what are the members will be loaded into it? Uh, in static int i equal to ten. Yes. So, give me a minute. It's static. Pool. Okay, so static int i equal to ten. I equal to ten. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Then public static void main. Correct. Main function also is a static main. member. Yeah. It's a function over there. Yeah. Yes. Correct. So, okay. okay. Sorry. Just a minute, one second. Yeah, sure, sure, please. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So okay. then. So after that. So the local memory. Ah, so oh. after this, the main function starts to execute. Execute, yeah. When it starts to execute, it allocates a memory. Yeah. Yeah. Main function. Main function. Local memory for main function. Main function, yes. Ah, so. uh, a good, a good. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Shravan. Good man. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just check with others also. So next, I'll ask. Um, Hey, hi, Debita. You there? Yeah, hi. Uh, can you tell me next what will happen? So, static pool is created. Next, the main function starts to get. So, for that, a local memory has been created. Next, what will happen? Uh, so, local memory uh, it should get uh, uh, it should get the value uh, of the local uh, variable we choose. But here, I don't think we have allocated any local variable here. We directly put the system argument print i. Correct. So I think it will uh, print the uh, static uh, value that is ten. Uh, so how the search first it will go when we have only the local uh, when we the variable name alone means? Yeah. So it will go to the first local uh, memory first. Super. Then then it won't get anything in the I because nothing we have uh, mentioned any local variable there. So it had to go to the static pool. Yes. And the static pool is there i is equal ten. So it will print the value of uh, Super. i. Super. Yes. It prints me ten. Correct. Then again next can you tell me? Uh, so i is equal to 20 so uh, again we we have changed the value 
i is equal to twenty. So as a static variable, so the value will change everywhere. Ah, so, so again, I'm referring by the variable name alone. I yeah. Search goes to local memory. Do we have i variable here? No. No. Then goes to the static pool. Here yeah, it changes. Static pool, and it will find the value of uh, i and change it to twenty. Correct. So this step is called as initialization. Initialization. Yes. Yeah. So only when we give integer i, so it's like when it follows with a data type, that is the place called declaration. That is creating a new variable. Yeah. When we have only the variable information, it's initialization, trying mm -hmm. to replace the old value to new value. That's the place. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now what happened? Now it will print the value of i, which is static variable, which is twenty. Correct. Goes to the local memory. We don't have i, and and don't have i, and it will print the value of i, which is twenty. That's it. Good. Okay, good. Uh, good. The data. Super. So now next, I'll okay. ask. Uh, hey, hi, Tony. Hey, thanks, the data. Yeah. Uh, hey, hi, Tony. You there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Can you tell me now what happened? So we have actually worked right now. Uh, executed so till here. So next step is integer i equal to fifty. What will happen now? Right. So it's going to the. It's going to do the same thing. No. Uh, no. Integer is going for the to the local mem uh, local memory. Super. Whenever it follows with actually what the data type that is, I'm trying to create a new variable. So I'm executing main function. So it creates a local memory in the main. Right. Super. Yes, next. Can so you tell me? I is going to be, uh, oh, is this to me? Yes, so what will happen now? Only yeah, referring to variable name. I is going to be 50. Correct. Goes to the local memory. Do we have I variable? Yes, it yes. is 50 now. Good man. Next, can you execute this step? Okay, so um, now it's going to look for the local memory, i, and then it's going to be 50 plus 20, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, yes, because i plus 20 first. So goes to the local memory, do we have i? Yes, that is 50. So that is, it's 50, then we have 20. So 50 plus 20, that is equal to 70. Now where that has been stored? It's going to store that in the local memory. Correct. Because again, we are referring by I will only the variable name. Search goes to the local memory, changes from 50 to 70. 70. That's it. Yes, super. Then. Okay. Uh, it's going to print out I yes. equals uh, 70. Yes, correct. Because only referring by variable name, always search goes to the local memory. memory. Yes, prints me 70. A hey, good man, good Tony. Thanks, man. So next, I'll ask, uh, okay, uh, anyone you guys like to uh, try? Apart from Tony, Dibudata and Shravan, anyone like to volunteer the remaining? Okay, I'll ask. Hey, hi, Prajnia, you're there? Hi. Hey, Prajnia. Can you tell me, execute me this? Yeah, in this, uh, it will access static variable. Super. Why actually what it goes to static pool? Because uh, we are referring i with class name. Correct. So global underscore local underscore 2 is the class name. Referring the i variable with help of the class name in search always goes to static pool. Super. That is what? 20. 20 plus 20. So... 20 plus 20, it will be 40. So that 40, where I need to store? Uh, static pool. No, can you see here? I is equal to global underscore 2 dot I plus 20. That means where I'm trying to store? I'm having only the variable name alone. Okay, local, uh, local pool, sorry. Correct. Only when we refer by the variable name, search goes to local memory. Yes, we have I there. So changes from 70 to 40. Yes, correct. Uh, then? Then it will print i value, local uh, variable i value. Yes, that is 40. Correct. Hey, good. Hey, uh, thanks, Prajnia. Uh, so, okay, can you tell me the next step? Now what will happen? 
now it will print uh, static pool from static pool i value ah. the reason begin that is because we are accessing with class b correct yes a good thanks virginia so now next uh, i'll ask uh hey, hi jagdish you there yeah yes madam yeah jagdish can you tell me now next what happened next step so um you are adding up uh, for the i so it 20 plus 25 45 correct so why actually what it is 20 so so the i we are calling with the referring with the class name correct whenever we refer with the help of a class name search goes to static pool and then the value is 20 there 20 Plus twenty five, that will be forty five. Plus twenty five, that is forty five. Where I am trying to store now? In the I uh, static query. Correct, because referring to the type of class name, search goes there, changes from twenty to forty five. Good man, super. So yeah, for uh, this. Ah, hey, good, good, hey, good man. Thanks, man. So I'll ask the. Uh, hey, Ashwita, you there? Uh, Anil, just just Ashwita, right? Hi, hi. Uh, is it Ashwita? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi. Ah, uh, can you explain me this? Ah, uh, okay. So here I is equal to forty-five plus twenty. Ah. Ah. So why it's forty-five? Because in the Above line, it has stored the value as forty-five. Oh, correct. Okay. So here we have stored. So why here for this I am getting forty-five? Because in the above line we have. Uh, oh, no, that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Here, execute me this line alone. Why actually it's not taking forty? It's taking forty-five. Because it is referring to the global underscore local class. Correct. That is, I am referring the I variable by help of the class name. So yeah. search always goes to static pool directly. Yes, correct. Then forty plus twenty five. Twenty five. That is seventy. So there, where I am trying to store right now this seventy. Ah, uh, in static pool. No. Check it here. I is equal to global local two dot i. So referring only by the variable means variable name means where the search will go. Local memory. Correct. Only when you have a variable name alone means always search goes to local memory. If we don't have that local memory there, then only the search will go to actually what static pool. But okay. when we refer by the class name, always the search directly goes to static pool. That's it. Okay. 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 Super. So next line. So it will print i value as seventy. Ah, uh, why? Because in local memory, I value is seventy. Correct. That's it. Super. Then. Then it will uh, go to static pool and it will print forty-five. Super. Global local at two. So for that, right now, the current value referring to the class name is goes to static pool. Value is forty-five. That's it. A good man. Good. Good. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Ah, uh, guys, if you see right now. i know that actually what i am repeating a number of times actually what each and every time global local to i i means goes to static pool referring by class name and then only by the variable name means search will goes to local memory i know that i have repeated n number of times you might feel bored but the reason behind this so simple because the more and more i say you might feel bored but it should get registered in your mind so by default any time actually what when you see when we refer with help of class name search should go to static pool that you should remember whenever we have only the variable name search goes to local memory if we don't have anything then only it goes to the static pool so that is what i need you to get registered here got it right yes dev yes dev dev so if in any program if we have two variables with the same name we only will distinguish like one is static and another is local The only way to distinguish between them is uh, putting the class ID, right? Uh, like uh, in case of static, we will we can mention that 
uh, the class uh, the class name dot uh, the same variable uh, so change the value there okay that's how the program i think uh, distributes between two variable the same name correct correct so always static that's why actually what we say the perfect way actually what to refer a static members with the help of the class okay yeah. because when we have actually what the local variable also with the help of the same name it's always actually what which will be a problem so that's why always we should refer static members with the help of a class name only so we have uh, three members uh, one static one non static and uh, one local with same uh, name same variable name no 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 uh, oh okay, okay in case so yeah. in case you're saying this non static member also with it's same same name then uh, i think to distinguish between the three of them is uh, to you know uh, for non static we have we will uh, we will refer it by object and okay. with static with a class name and uh, with a local no name required okay see here right now so yes. when it comes over here this might be static or non static it's entirely there under the global level correct can you see static int i is 10 i given Stat integer i is equal to 20 i given both are same variable names it throws me an error a duplicate got it right so static and non static it should have unique actually what names unique variable names only for the actually what the uh, local it can be actually what duplicate but actually it will be deferred with the help of referring by the variable name alone and then here with the help of the class name reference that answers your question yeah 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 mom thank you good any questions for anyone guys anyone anyone has any questions so far guys okay cool so let me give a short break to you so next thing is actually what we are going to see for our uh, functions that is called as a methods over there okay so that's what we are going to see right now so anyone has any questions okay so we'll have a short break till 8 uh, a 7 minutes break we will have then we will start with actually what methods or functions over there okay good okay thank you so we'll have a break for 7 uh, minutes
Look, take it. Uh, shall we start the session? We'll continue. Okay, good. So, so now actually what? We will start with functions. Functions are also called as methods. Functions are also called as methods here. So how to write a function and then why we need a function is what first we need to know. So let me create a new package. Like this. I'll just close the unwanted things. So now I just want to print the week this season. Okay, so I have some seven set of statements over there, which will re be repeated for n number of times in my program. Okay, so how to handle this? That's what we are going to see right now. So to handle that, okay, see here, I can use functions. So I'll copy paste the same code which we have here. So totally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times has been repeated. So this is what I need to handle. So for this, how we will be handling the methods, okay? How to write a methods and then the usage is what we so to write a method, it's so simple. Okay, so we need to write a method name. So the method name I will just give it as because it talks about weakness. So I'll have it as weakness. Always methods should have open and close the parentheses. Got it? Then after that, open and then close the with help of flower brace. Because this is a place we need to write what informations need to be repeated whenever it is called, what we need to execute. That is what we will have it here. Got it? Then the next thing is, okay, so we have given actually what weekdays over there is a method name. 
So for the variables, data types are the reference. For the objects, classes are the reference over there. Same thing right now. For the methods over there, we need to have a return type. Okay, there is a concept called return type is there that we need to have it. So what is this return type over there means? That is, whenever I call a method, do I need to return any value? One option I should return. One option I don't want to return. If I don't want to return anything, I can mention here as void. Got it? So that I don't want to return anything. Okay, it is not mandatory for me to return an information. I can have a return statement, but I don't want to return anything here. Instead of void, and this statement also is not mandatory for me to use. Instead of void, if I have some other data type, can you see, if I give integer, that means what? Whenever I call this method, I need to return an integer value. Got it? If it is a string, I need to return a string value. Hi. If it is Boolean, I need to return a Boolean value. Okay. So, based on whatever return type I'm giving here, that value should be returned here. See, if it is void alone, I don't want to return. I cannot return anything here. And also, it's not mandatory for me to use the return statement also if it is void because we are not returning anything. So, if you want, we can have otherwise, it's not mandatory for me to return an information. Got it? Once again, I will explain, okay, see here, how to write a method. So a method will have a method name. So this talks about weekdays. So weekdays is a method name. Always method should be followed with open and close parentheses. Then the information what I need to give, it should be there under a block. That means open and close the parentheses. Uh, open and close actually what? This flower braces, okay? That's up. Then here we should give the return type. Okay. If it is void, I don't want to return any value. Got it, guys? Any questions so far? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, just tell me. Uh, so, uh, what do you mean by return? So, I think, uh, so if you if execute this function, Will it uh, print something else or will it return some value to the program? Or it, it won't show us, show, show us in a console? Uh, uh, so, sorry, come again, come again. So, uh, so, I am asking like, what do you mean by return? Uh, like, uh, it will return the value to the program or it will print something else or what? What do you mean by return? Uh, that's right. So, it's going to return me to the place wherever actually what I'm going to call it. Okay, so I, I will show you. Still, now we have not seen that part, right? Uh, once we you start to utilize the method, you will come to know that return information. Okay. Okay. So, any questions so far about the syntax? Any questions? Hi, Murli. Yeah, hi. Uh, is return type mandatory for functions like uh, void? Uh, oh. Yes, return type is what means actually what it's mandatory if you're using some other data types. But if it is void, we, it is not mandatory for me to use return statement. Because void is not going to return you any information. That's why it is not mandatory to use return statement whenever we are using void. But if we want, still we can use it, but we cannot return any value if it is void yet. I mean to say void, see, this function is not returning anything. So still I have to mention void in the uh, first line, that function declaration, first line, void weekdays. Correct. Because so void, we can't write direct functions. Correct. So right now when I want to declare a variable, it is mandatory for me to give any of the data type, correct? Yes. 
same follows for the functions if i want to declare a function so this step is called as a kind of a declaration okay so whenever i want to declare a function it should be followed with some return type okay got it yes so that's what if i don't want to return any value i need to mention it as void if i want to return some value you have to give what data type if it is integer or a string or whatever it is then we have to give it okay and so right yes super so now here if you see i have these type of lines which has been repeated in number of times so this is what i need to have here see monday to sunday so this is actually what a function a function also can be static and then non static if it is actually what static we just need to be followed with the keyword called static if it is not following with the keyword called static it's a non static method so there are two types of method one is static another one is non static clear so this is a static method that means if i want to call this method i need to call them via help of the class name okay that's a standard practice even i can call with help of only the method name also is possible but always static members should be followed with help of class name okay so these are the lines of code which has been repeated for me number of times see we have a long n number of lines has been written see now function usage dot then we days so i am going to replace that information by calling that method because that method also has the same set of informations that is going to have here so what is the necessity of the method now you will clearly come to know which are the places are needed you just you can change it here like this see we have reduced actually what n number of lines of code and then it is there in a organized structure okay so easy for everyone to understand okay another advantage is what means see if i want to change it to some other see friday is there friday best day if i give see now what happen only one place right click run as java application everywhere friday best day okay wherever actually what we have called it's going to print me the same information only see if i again change it to friday everywhere it will be friday now see here everywhere it's friday got it that's it same thing if i want to do the same thing here now what element if it is not then function i need to go there friday best day everywhere i need to change like this so what will happen it's actually what any changes in the code i need to change it everywhere wherever it has been there there is a possibility i can also miss out some places but if it is a function it's in a organized structure only one place i will do the change it will reflect everywhere wherever it is needed another advantage is increases the performance also because think over right now actually what it is just five lines to six lines of code but the same thing in the real time situation it will be 200 to 300 lines of code if i want to utilize the 200 to 300 lines of code in more than 10 to 15 places that means what if i'm going to write it in this way that means i'm going to occupy totally 3000 to 4000 lines of code got it but the same thing if i'm going to do it in this way just i can finish it within actually what so 300 plus max of max actually what for these things to write over there 15 lines extra over there that's it and any changes happens i will come only to that method and then i'll do the changes only in that method alone not anywhere else okay so that's why we should use actually what functions 
so functions are a mandatory thing that will be used everywhere and then main thing is it's easy to organize that's the reason we will be using these functions got it anyone has any questions anyone has any questions guys everyone understood what is a function how to write a function and then what is the usage of this function so everyone understood this so far any questions from anyone can everyone ping me as yes if you have understood tony shravan you guys understood uh if you guys are not feeling comfortable let me know over there okay so this um, hello, is hello 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 molly yes yes ishwika uh can we have a function wide weekdays uh, without static word yes so if that is the thing only one change that we need to do can anyone tell me what i need to do anyone anyone can tell me you can unmute or you can just ping me in the chat window we have to create a key uh, object that's it yes super so new function usage what is the object name i can just give obj1 equal to the reference is my class name class name yeah everywhere instead of referring with a class name i need to just refer with help of the object name that's a one thing that answers your question uh, shweta mm, yes yes thank you right. so static members can be accessed with the help of the class name non static members can be accessed with the help of the object name that's the one thing got it right yeah so murli i have a question yes um, so is it uh, is it better to have the static functions or uh, or the so static so usually static is best over there because it will have a single copy unnecessary extra memory will not be created okay but actually what you want actually what somewhere actually what the changes to be uh, utilized over there in different way so that time we can have it as a non static it depends always okay yeah. whenever it comes to selenium over there so you will also come to know actually when we come to the framework sessions over there you will come to know where we need to use static where we uh, need to use non static all the time okay yeah okay yeah thank you any questions for anyone guys okay good so with this today i will just stop it for today so it's like actually what tomorrow again we will see about actually what in the functions what is return types and then functions with arguments both the things tomorrow we will see okay so just don't want to take it more over there so we'll go slowly one by one okay so some things you might feel that actually what i am uh, repeating and then i'm boring it so that is a, a small thing for me it's like when i repeat n number of times so you will be understanding some informations always over there so you will not forget so that's the reason i might be repeating for some things in number of times okay cool guys so with this i'll stop for today so tomorrow we'll again continue with the same session thank you bye guys see you uh hey sure bella uh, today i will just forward it yeah thank you thanks thanks guys thanks